Okay. Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, January 17th, 2023. Happy New Year late. I have taken a break from posting up until yesterday, and so now we're going to do a practice update. So the practice has lots of stuff going on, and Kim wanted me to mention, take a look-see on our Optimal Health social media page on Facebook or um, our website, and then Optimal Health Associates, and then, of course, obviously, if you're watching this, it's on Noel R. Williams, MD. There are some little advances in aesthetics we've added, which are kind of interesting um, and meaningful, but... Uh, they're, they're self-explanatory. And then uh, we've done a lot of cool stuff the last few months of the year that has worked out extremely well for patient care, especially with treating some very hard to manage things um, like long-haul COVID uh, and um, augmenting cancer care and things like that. So there's some restorative stuff we do, which we're very happy with. Um, some of that is procaine therapy. Some of it is ozone therapy. Some of it is nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide injections, or NAD plus injections. So there's a whole variety of techniques that we've brought to the fore over the last six months of the year to aug augment our already, I think, rather uh, brisk homeopathic portion of our practice to augment our allopathic portion. I think the best way to provide care is to incorporate anything your patients need to get the job done. So that's what we do. And so Thus and so. I don't know. I'm the, <laughs> so this is a typical post since I haven't posted in a while, so I'm out of practice. Uh, otherwise, um, can you explain uh, homeopathic and allopathic? Allopathic would classically be um, an MD approach, which I've spent a lot of my life doing. Homeopathic would be so meds, surgery, stuff like that. Homeopathic, I think, classically for me means using um, more health-wise and and natural occurring things, so things like vitamins, things like manipulation of tissue, like chiropractic or osteopathic medicine, um, using tissue products that are natural to readjust your cells, thinking about mitochondria and nutrition, functional medicine, which to me is, let's get those cells to work and use things to help the body heal itself. And so that's what it means for me. So, the, and so, and there, there's not a lot of, there's, there's people who overlap, but there's what we've tried to do, which I think we've done successfully. And I'd say that was our big accomplishment, um, in 2022 for optimal health is the full integration of allopathic and homeopathic. I mean, I think allopathic treatment is essential. I mean, there's things that cannot be treated except when I have to operate on someone or, I had someone with who came in for a problem today whose blood pressure was 180 over 100 and then 170 over 95. There's new onset. We've taken care of her. But a lot of stress going on. Put her on clonidine. It wasn't going to be a... There wasn't something else to do um, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I wasn't going to send her to the ER which would have been even more intense. So there's times you have to use allopathic medicine. Likewise, when someone's having really, really severe back pain, um, rather than going immediately to surgery or immediately to medicinal management even, you could consider chiropractic manipulation or osteopathic manipulation. So there's always a range of choices you offer people and you let them you help guide them, but again, ultimately, you want to partner with the patient to make the decision that they think is best for them by giving the positives and the negatives of each choice and the reality of the decision. So um, that's what we try to do at Optimal Health Associates. Big thank you to all our supportive can or collateral cancer physicians um, who we work with. We had either 12 or 13 new cancers in December. I lost track. We had so many, we, which was horrid, but that's one thing I'm very concerned about. Please get your cancer screenings. Please get your pap smears, get your mammograms. If you're older and having abnormal bleeding or postmenopausal bleeding, make sure you tell your doctor, uh, make sure it gets worked up. We had eight new breast cancers and only one of those eight were in people who had skipped last year or the last year or two. Uh, seven people were right on schedule, so, but the vast majority of them were early, but that's still a record for us and we do diagnose the most in the state every year. Um, in a month, and it's not a record we want to ever have happen again, but we manage all that and get them all set. 
with care plans. And thank you to Dr. Alita Toma, Stephanie Taylor, uh, Brady Haygood, Dr. Mathias and Dr. Southers at Mercy, uh, Dr. Lindemuth and, Lindemuth and Dr. Rabel at Integris, and also Dr. Showalter, an oncologist at Integris, Dr. Um, Geister at Integris, and Dr. Vova and Dr. Thompson and Dr. Morgan at Mercy, and I'm sure there's others, but those are the group that manage the vast majority of our cancer patients, and they do fabulous. We also had two colon cancers. Thank you to the colorectal surgeons at Integris for taking care of them, and then, and of course, wonderful Dr. Toma. And then the, we had either two or three endometrial cancers. It's kind of blending now because we had three severe precancer changes separately um, to the uterus in December, so we either had five or six in combination. Um, thank you very much to Dr. Camille Jackson at Mercy, an absolutely outstanding G1 oncologist. I can't say enough about her. We work very closely together all the time, and she is the bomb. So she does very hard surgeries and does the chemotherapy-related stuff for all G1 oncology cancer. So a great group of people help our patients. And there's a tremendous number of doctors throughout the community who help our patients who give them the very good access when we call and request that. So I um, won't go through all of them. So anyway, that's the update. We have a lot of cool stuff. Well, more cool stuff. I always have cool stuff because I believe in reading and research and training. Doing it the old way. So the half-life, I always say the story. What is the half-life of medical knowledge? It's four years. Who told us that? Well, it was Manny Sigurnis, the dean of Ohio State Medical School at our baccalaureate. And he said, this is my favorite story about Ohio State because there weren't a lot of high points. It was just work. He said, you have to remember that. That means in four years, everything you've learned as you're getting out of residency, half of it's going to be wrong, outdated, and incorrect. And he goes, know what the scary part is? We don't know which half. So you have to keep on reading. You have to keep on researching. And that's what we do at Optimal Health. That's what I do. And sometimes I annoy all my um, compatriots with read this article, do this. We have to change. We have to change. But that's what you have to do because practicing like it's uh, 1997 when it's 2023 is an error. And you don't want to be the first to do stuff, but you don't want to be the last. So that's always a great thing to think about. So good night. Thank you.